Thank you for the floor, Dmitroshkulko, National News Agency of Ukraine. Today we have had a lot of right things what Ukraine should do to prepare itself for accession. My question is to Olga Stefanishina. From your point of view, what EU itself should do to prepare itself uh, for accepting uh, Ukraine? And to you, uh, European side, if I may. Uh, we have uh, had a lot about the necessity to conduct some kind of reforms in the process of enlargement of EU. What kind of reforms do you expect uh, to be done um, during the next five years, let me say so? Thank you. Uh, uh, a very interesting question to uh, to Ukrainian side. Uh, indeed, uh, the all, all the process of uh, of enlargement we have been following over the the last years uh, first uh, signals that it's a it's a process of partnership. So, and I'm sure every transformation which will be needed throughout the way will be done. There's been a number of discussions on the reform of European Union and adjustment in some policies. Ukraine has always been a constructive partner in that regard. Additionally, Ukraine has presented its uh, um, uh, negotiating position over the intergovernmental conference uh, today where we have outlined our interest in, in adjusting the methodology for enlargement to the reality of enlargement and uh, enabling uh, this methodology to become the real uh, route for the seamless integration into European Union throughout the way and we are looking forward for engaging in a dialogue into that. Yes, indeed, in parallel of the enlargement, we have launched already a, a reform process when it comes about, uh, it's about uh, budget, about governance, about our values, so many things. So it's uh, the end of the presidency, the Belgian presidency is about also the strategic agenda. It's all about the reforms that we have to, to launch uh, in the near future. Well, um, first, I think, uh there would have to be consensus emerging, and I'm looking at the Belgian presidency, uh, also the European Council that is to take place uh, this week, uh, to decide uh, that the next commission should be an enlargement commission, meaning that by the end of the mandate of the next commission, there would have to be an enlargement of the European Union, meaning welcoming new members uh, to the European Union. And everything else could follow from this. Uh, you've heard uh, the, the, the reform agenda uh, launched by the uh, Belgian presidency about institutional reforms, about budgetary reforms. I think that uh, this is going to be an internal uh, discussion. Uh, but it is also very important to point out uh, that this is not a precondition uh, for enlargement to, to take place. We, in the Commission, we are convinced that with the current institutional setup, we can welcome uh, new members. Uh, what is important is that we now, when we uh, decide about uh, the program of the next Commission, we make it very clear that we want enlargement to happen, and everything else uh, follows from that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question, uh, Philippe. Uh, thank you, Philippe Renier, newspaper Le Soir. Um, first, a question to both uh, Commissioner and Deputy Prime Minister. Um, it's about also the, the schedule, in a way. Um, the President of the European Council once stated that uh, the EU, but also Ukraine, should be ready to, um, to enter the EU um, at the date of uh, 2030. Do you, do you agree with this um, time frame? And, et alors une question pour euh, Madame euh, la Ministre euh, de la Présidence yeah, belge. On a beaucoup parlé ces temps-ci de la position de la Hongrie qui est un petit peu retardée ou rendu les, déc les décisions difficiles et on peut s'attendre peut-être à ce que ça se poursuivra. Mais au-delà de la, de la Hongrie, est-ce qu'il n'y a pas un risque qu'avec les élections qui se sont produites aux Pays-Bas, avec les élections qui viennent en France, etc., et d'autres encore, que le, le momentum que l'on observe pour l'élargissement ne finisse par, par s'essouffler en quelque sorte Merci. So on 2030, I think I have just answered your question before you have even put it. 
the end of the mandate of the next commission should be the 31st of October 2029. Um, so there it is. Uh, there, there it, no, that's, that's about enlargement. And I think when, uh, when the leaders are discussing uh, strategic decisions of this kind, they are taking a holistic approach and opening the door uh, for everybody who will be ready uh, by then. Because don't forget that this is not a question about uh, uh, the European Union giving deadlines uh, for when one can join. Uh, the European Union uh, could give indications that if these countries are ready to join, by then the European Union will be able to receive them. But the conditions will have to be met. Uh, whether this is going to be in 2027 that uh, the conditions will be met by the country in question or later, it's largely dependent uh, on the performance of the country. Uh, thank you so much. If it would uh, depend only from Ukraine, the deadlines would be much more optimistic. Uh, but uh, again, uh, there is a lot of uh, process to be done at the side of the European Commission, but also we have to take account uh, the broader enlargement group, uh, gr group of the countries. In Ukrainian logic, uh, we uh, stick to a number of key principles. First, Ukraine is not a newcomer when it comes to European process and in integration into EU single market market. Largely, we are very much aligned uh, with, the, with the EU key and enjoy the benefits of European single market as well as, uh, as uh, open to, uh, to, uh, to European Union. Second, uh, second principle, membership in European Union does not mean to us a uh, full access, uh, Im full immediate access to EU single market. So, uh, meaning that there could be a number of transitions uh, agreed as it was for the other countries which joined the European Union, and uh, this would be part of our um, uh, our uh, our framework. And um, uh, third, very important principle that nothing in the accession process could be a bigger challenge than the war we are going through. Meaning that no political uh, political discourse within the country could be an obstacle to uh, moving through the transformations needed to this regard. That combined together gives us a very optimistic forecast and uh, uh, brings us to another clear message from Ukraine. Ukraine is ready and capable and will deliver on its processes. And if on this way, we would need to help others and mobilize energy within European Union to reform itself, we are also ready to do that. I will continue on this optimistic line. <laughs> Euh, je, je pense qu'effectivement, euh, well, bon, le jour d'abord n'est pas au pessimisme. Beaucoup euh, disaient qu'on ne pourrait pas uh, euh, parvenir à, à ouvrir euh, ces, ces négociations, à se mettre d'accord sur le negotiation framework euh, pendant notre présidence. On vient de prouver que c'est possible. Et puis, euh, c'est aussi dans notre intérêt. And euh, je pense qu'il y a dix ans, je l'ai rappelé dans mon, think, uh, mes commentaires d'ouverture, uh, le peuple ukrainien nous a envoyé un signal fort. Il est de notre devoir aujourd'hui d'y répondre, de tout mettre en œuvre pour cela et de répondre aussi aux inquiétudes grandissantes de nos citoyens. Vous faites allusion aux élections et aux résultats de ces élections au sein de, du Parlement européen. Je pense que c'est de notre devoir aujourd'hui de répondre à toutes ces inquiétudes qui sont entre autres en grande partie provoquées par l'agression russe, par les interférences russes, par le danger que cela constitue, que ce soit sur notre stabilité euh, économique euh, et sur notre avenir, tout simplement, parce que la Russie euh, interfère dans nos affaires, dans notre stabilité, met en péril nos valeurs démocratiques. Avoir euh, aujourd'hui la Moldavie, puisqu'on va ouvrir dans quelques instants la conférence intergouvernementale aussi avec la Moldavie et l'Ukraine, qui aspire à devenir un membre de l'Union européenne qui mène les réformes nécessaires pour y parvenir un jour avec notre aide et avoir aussi autour de la table suffisamment de pays convaincus pour ouvrir cette ICG, donc cette conférence intergouvernementale aujourd'hui. C'est la preuve qu'il y a des volontés autour de la table. C'est la preuve aussi que chacun a saisi qu'il y va de notre intérêt géostratégique aujourd'hui d'avoir l'Ukraine 
l'Ukraine, d'avoir la Moldavie, d'avoir peut-être demain aussi le Monténégro comme membre à part entière de l'Union européenne.